In this video, we're going to show you how to replace a cam position sensor on your Honda Pilot. This sensor will require a relearn procedure. Let's get started. Pushing on the tabs, we're going to remove the cover from the bottom of the splash shield. Reaching up inside, you're going to find a little screw for the bottom of the radiator. We're going to open that and we're going to start to drain the radiator fluid. Before draining your coolant, be sure to have a drain bucket under you. To drain the radiator faster, we're going to open the top cap. Be sure that the system is cold when you do this. If the system's hot, it will be pressurized and it can come up and spray you. Using a 10 millimeter socket, loosen the terminals on the battery. Remove the negative first, pop it off to the side, remove the positive, loosen the wing nuts, and then remove the poles, and pull the bracket back as I pull the battery out, and remove the battery from the car. Remove the engine cover, remove the coolant reservoir. We're going to pull straight up out of the bracket. Pull the line out of the plastic stay. And we're going to move it over to the other side out of the way. Using a 14 millimeter socket, we're going to put tension on the auto tensioner, loosen the belt, and pull it off. Let the tensioner return. and then continue to remove the belt. Using a 19 millimeter socket, remove the five lug nuts. Remove the wheel. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt at the corner of the bumper. This bolt should come out. There's a metal bracket on top of that it screws into. And that metal bracket is spinning with the bolt inside of it. And it ripped our front fender liner apart. There'll be one more bolt. Our shield is broken right here, so we don't necessarily have to remove it. And that bracket is spinning as well. Remove these two bolts and then go to the other side and do the same thing. We're going to remove the three clips on the front of the cover. Pull the cover down. And remove it from the vehicle. Remove the clips out of the front of the inner fender liner. There's going to be one more up top. Then we're going to pull the inner fender liner back behind the brake rotor and that's going to give us plenty of room. Using a 14 millimeter, we're going to remove the bolt out of the middle of the tensioner. Unscrew the bolt. You won't be able to get it out yet. Just pull it out as far as it can go. Using a 12 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the bolt on the bottom of the tensioner. Remove the bottom bolt. Remove the pulley and the tensioner. 
Using a 12 millimeter socket, remove the bolt on the back of the power steering pump. There's one more bolt for the power steering pump on the bottom. We're going to lift the power steering reservoir straight up out of its bracket. Pull it slightly up to the side. We're going to pull this power steering pump up and out of the way. Just like that. Using a pair of pliers, we're going to squeeze the back of the plastic clip and pull it out of the cover. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the bolts out of the top cover. There's one more right next to the alternator. And remove the cover. Remove the 10 millimeter bolts for the rear timing cover. Remove the wire harness out of the plastic stay of the rear timing cover. And then remove the rear cover. We're going to use a little bit of heat on the crank bolt. This crank bolt should have a bit of thread locker on it. So we're going to heat it up and try and loosen that before we try to remove it. This is a special tool designed for the Honda crankshafts. You do not need it, but it's nice to have. Using the holder and a 19 millimeter socket, we're gonna break the crank bolt free. Once I crack the bolt free, we can remove it. Wiggle the crank pulley back and forth. As you're wiggling, be pulling out off of the shaft and remove the crank pulley. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the bolts out of the lower cover.
remove the cover, remove the plate off of the crankshaft. On this nub right here, there's going to be an arrow. This is going to be our timing mark. You want to make sure you can see this. Take a clean rag and clean back here if you can't. Now you can see that nice arrow. Using a marker or some nail polish, I'm just going to color right on that arrow just to make it stand out a bit. I'm also going to put one right on the timing mark on the crankshaft cog. It's going to be one tooth with a little dimple, and that's going to be the one that you'll mark. I'm going to reinstall the crank bolt. With our crank bolt installed, we're going to now line our timing marks up. Only turn the crankshaft clockwise. You do not want to go counterclockwise. We're going to go around in a circle in the clockwise direction until our white paint mark lines up with that arrow on the top. Once you have your marks lined up, go ahead and remove your ratchet and then we'll go up top and make sure our cams are lined up as well. If the cams up top are not lined up where they should be, we'll come back down here and turn this 360 degrees and then recheck up top. With the bottom mark lined up on the paint mark, we're going to come up top and check that our cams are lined up. There's this arrow on number one, and that's going to line up in this top groove. And you're going to go to the back and do the same thing. Make sure that the white mark is lined up with the mark on the back. Using a jack with a piece of wood, we're gonna push up on the oil pan and lift the engine. Put a slight amount of upward pressure onto the engine and then we'll start to remove the engine mount. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the bolt for the harness stay on top of the engine mount. Using a 14 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the two bolts from the engine mount. Remove the two bolts. Using a quarter inch ratchet with a 14 millimeter socket, you're gonna get the bottom bolt for the engine mount. It is a very tight fit. And once you have it broken free, you should be able to spin it out by hand. I'm just using the tip of my finger on the shoulder of the bolt and moving in a circular motion. Unthread the bolt and pull it out a bit. We're gonna go after the top bolt on the motor mount. Spin the bolt all the way out and remove it. That's the top one, it's the longest one. Remove the bottom bolt out of the motor mount.
That was the bottom middle bolt. Go up top and remove the motor mount. Using one of the poles for a battery tie down or an extra bolt, we're gonna thread it through here and this is gonna hold the tensioner. Get the bolt started in the bracket and we're gonna thread this down until the bolt makes contact with the back of the tensioner. Once the bolt makes contact with the tensioner, I'm gonna screw this in just a quarter to a half a turn more. You do really don't wanna put a lot of pressure on this bolt. And that's all I'm gonna do. You don't wanna bend the bolt that's in here. Using a 14 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the bolt for the idler pulley. Remove the bolt and the pulley, and then remove the belt. Remove the belt, starting on the right side, and then moving your way over to the left. Using an old timing belt, I'm gonna wrap it around the camshaft pulley, or the camshaft gear. Make sure that your marks are lined up. We have our white mark lined up with the line in the back on the plate. Make sure you have those marked. Then using a 17 millimeter socket, we're gonna break the bolt free on the cam gear. Push up on this tab and pull it off the bracket if you need extra space. Using a strap wrench, we're gonna hold the cam gear in place while we use our socket to remove the bolt. Fully remove the bolt. And wiggle the cam gear off. This cam gear is keyed, so it will only go on one way. On the back side of this plate, you're gonna find the connector for the cam sensor. There's a push button on the back side. Push that button and pull the connector off. Using a 12 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the two bolts for the plate. Remove the bolts and remove the plate. I'm gonna clean out any debris that was behind that plate. You can use a vacuum, pull it out. We just don't want any of it really sitting inside of where the timing covers are gonna be. So we'll take a vacuum and suck all of this up, anything that's left over here. And then we'll do one final blowout before we put our timing belt back on. Using an eight millimeter socket, remove the bolt out of the cam sensor. Pull straight up and remove the sensor. Install the new cam sensor and get the bolt started. Torque the cam sensor bolt to three foot pounds. Now it's ready to be installed on the car. Install the cam plate into the car. I'm gonna connect the sensor. Push until you hear a click. If you don't hear a click, give it a pull and make sure it's secure. Line the cam plate up with the holes and then get the bolt started. Torque the bolts to 16 foot-pounds.
Install the cam gear. Make sure it's sitting in the keyway. We're gonna apply a bit of engine oil to this bolt. With the bolt coated in oil, we're gonna install it. Using a strap wrench and a torque wrench, we're gonna torque the cam bolt to 67 foot-pounds. When you're doing this, you want to try to make this cam gear move as least amount as possible. Once you have the bolt torqued, be sure that your timing mark lines up with the mark on the back plate. We have to pull ours forward just slightly. It's right there. Now it's nice and in line. Install the timing belt onto the vehicle. We're gonna start on our bottom cog. It's gonna be the crank. We're gonna slip the belt onto there. Make sure it's nice and tight, sitting perfectly. Come up over the idler. You want this to be nice and taut. And we're gonna pull it up and over to our first cam. This right here is a little too loose. We're gonna try and get one more tooth, one or two more teeth out of that belt onto the cam gear. You may have to work down below and up top during this. While you're doing this, keep an eye on your timing marks, making sure they're staying true. This one moved back slightly, so we're gonna pull it back to where it's lined up. Right there. I'm gonna go back down below. Pull it around the water pump. Then it's going to go up and over the next cam gear. Once I have the belt nice and taut on these first two pulleys, then we can pull it over our adjuster tensioner. Once we're installed, you wanna make sure this was nice and tight. I just watched this cam move backwards. I'm gonna double check these marks and then recheck my tension. We're gonna double check that all of our cam gear marks are lined up on top. This one is, it's lined up perfectly with this mark in the back. We'll take a look at the back one. And that one's perfectly lined up as well. So now we'll go check the mark on the crank. Now we're on the bottom, looking at our timing marks. This arrow right here should line up with this arrow right here. And they are. So now we can come up to our tensioner
and we're going to pull this pin. Using a pair of pliers, I'm going to remove the pin out of the tensioner, just like that. Check the belt tightness. And then we're going to go around and triple check our timing marks. Our bottom one is still lined up, so we'll go up top and check our two top ones. Make sure they haven't moved. And double check the front. Make sure everything's still perfectly lined up, which it is. We're going to install the engine mount bracket plate. Before we do this, we're going to install the two long bolts in the top two holes and the short bolt on the bottom, and then install it into the vehicle. Once you have the mount lined up, go around and get all the bolts started by hand. This top right bolt is the hardest. Be very patient. Now we'll go around and snug down all the bolts. We're going to snug the mount bolts down and then torque them to 33 foot-pounds. If you can't get a torque wrench in here, do the best you can. We're going to install the top bolts into our engine mount bracket. You may need to go up or down on your jack to line up the bolt holes. In our case, we had to go down just a tad. And then the bolts were able to thread right in. On this back one, I'm just pulling on the rubber slightly on this back mount to help line it up just a little bit better. Once you have these started by hand, go ahead and snug them down. You want to make sure your bolts are lined up before you start using a ratchet since we're putting a steel bolt into an aluminum bracket. The aluminum threads will strip really easy. Torque the top engine mount bolts to 32 foot-pounds. We're going to remove the jack out from under the vehicle. Using a 19 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the crank bolt. Install the plate. Do this with the curve pointed out. Install the lower cover into the vehicle. Go around and get the bolt started.
go around and snug down all of the bolts. Using a rag and some brake parts cleaner, we're going to clean the crank bolt. We're going to pull the washer down and get in there as well. Once you've done that, we're going to add engine oil in between the washer and the head of the bolt. Use clean new engine oil. Put it over. And then also on the top of the washer. Install the crankshaft pulley. Set it into the keyway. And wiggle it into place. And install the oiled bolt. Tighten it by hand. Using a crank pulley holder, we're going to hold the crank. We're going to torque our crank bolt to 48 foot pounds. And then we're going to go an additional 60 degrees. You can use an angle meter if you have one. If you do not, you can mark the head of the bolt and mark a spot on the crank and then hold the crank as you spin the bolt to that 60 degree mark. While holding the crankshaft, turn your bolt 60 degrees. Install the top front timing cover. And get the bolt started. Go around and snug down all of the bolts. And we'll do the same thing on the back cover. Install this wire harness first into this cover and then fit it up into place. Get the bolt started. Go around and snug down all the bolts.
install the 10 millimeter bolt through the top bracket snug it down install the harness clip onto the timing cover push it into place it'll click in install the belt tensioner I have the big bolt installed through the middle for the pulley drop it down through the top turn it then we're gonna get the bolt started Install the bolt into the bottom of the tensioner. Line up the holes and get the bolt started. Snug the bolts down. Torque this middle pulley bolt to 33 foot-pounds. Torque the bottom bolt to 16 foot-pounds. Install the power steering pump. Back into place. Torque the power steering pump bolts to 16 foot-pounds. I'm going to reach down and install the belt around the crank. I'm also going to put it around the AC compressor. With our belt set up, ready to go, we're gonna use a 14 millimeter socket on the top pulley. We're gonna push on this, giving ourselves some space. Compress the tensioner and pull the belt over the pulley. Double check that the belt is sitting in the pulley. Go around and check them all, making sure they're sitting in the right ribs. And if it's sitting on a smooth pulley, make sure it's sitting square. Install the plastic harness stay onto the metal bracket. We're gonna install the power steering reservoir back into place. I had mine tied up with a bungee cord. If you had one of those, remove that now. Pull the reservoir down and drop it into the bracket. Should feel it click into place. Grab your coolant reservoir, bring it back over. 
and drop it into the bracket and install the line into the plastic stay. Install the battery. Hook the poles into the hooks at the bottom of the tray and tighten down the wing nuts. Install the positive battery cable. Snug it down. Install the negative battery cable. Snug it down. On the radiator, I have installed a coolant funnel. We're gonna fill the radiator with coolant. Let this bubble and drink the rest of the coolant. Once the radiator is full of fluid, we're gonna put a little bit more in here and then we're gonna go inside of the car and start it. This will start the bleeding procedure for the coolant and we're gonna run the car until we see no more bubbles coming out of here and the coolant level may drop again. When the coolant is fully bled inside of the vehicle, you'll be able to have the heat on and you will have no cold pockets. It will just always be hot. At that point, go ahead and remove your coolant funnel from the car and install your radiator cap. Install the under tray. We're gonna hook it up inside of here first. Pull the inner fender liner back into place. Tuck it up under the front bumper. We'll go around and start putting clips in. There's two 10 millimeter bolts on the underside of the bumper that go in to the inner fender liner. Our bolts are broken. This one just spins inside. This one's snapped. So we will not be re-securing these. However, if you have these bolts, go ahead and attach those now. Install the wheel. Get the five lug nuts started. Snug them down. Torque your wheels to 80 foot pounds in a star pattern. And you're good to go. Don't forget, you will need to do a relearn procedure at the end of this job. The steps are in the video description. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do.
TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.